Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver. And this is our video lecture over section point two, which covers triangles. Um, triangles are just three-sided figures. So uh, we're going to solve problems with angles, we're going to solve problems with similar triangles, and solve problems using the Pythagorean theorem, one of the most famous theorems in mathematics. So basically, it, uh, this is a very formal definition that they have here, but a triangle, we can just think of a three-sided figure as a triangle. Um, so here's an example of one right here. Uh, and one of the first things that we go over with a triangle is that the sum of the measures of the, th of the three angles of any triangle out there is always going to be 180. So the sum of the three measures of the angles. So the three measure angles are the angle 1, angle 5, and angle 3. And they always add up to 180. So let's look at an example. Um, let's say we have this triangle where angle B is 120 degrees, angle C is 17 degrees, so what would angle A be? It's a really pretty simple problem. We just know that they add to 180 degrees. We know two of the angles, so we add those two up and subtract that from 180, and we get 43 degrees. So those are pretty easy problems. Um, just uh, some useful information. It's not something I necessarily test over, but... Um, uh, classification of angles of a triangle. The big one that we're going to do and look at is when, when we look at a right triangle when we're using the Pythagorean theorem. You'll see this notation with a little square in there mention, uh, noting that it's a right angle which forms an L here. Okay, So that's a right triangle. An acute triangle or where all angles are acute and an obtuse triangle is where one angle is obtuse like this one. An obtuse angle of 120 degrees because it's between 90 and 180. So um, an isosceles triangle is just uh, when two of the sides are equal, and an equilateral triangle is when all three of the sides are equal, and if that's the case, then all three angles are going to be 60 degrees. Uh, I forgot to mention in this isosceles triangle, the two base angles there are always going to be equal as well. Um, and then a scaling triangle, no two sides are equal in length. That's more like this example here. It's just a normal scaling triangle. Um, but we'll be looking a lot mainly at right triangles eventually. Um, just good to know these other names of triangles, isosceles and equilateral. So then we're, uh, after the angle stuff, we're going to look at similar triangles. Similar triangles are basically the same triangle, just proportionally different size. Um, you can think of it like scaling with a map or something like that. And we're going to um, use proportions to figure out the missing sides of similar triangles. So um, in similar triangles, the angles are equal, but the sides may or may not be the same length. So they're essentially the same triangle, just different, different uh, lengths, uh, size, I guess. And corresponding angles are angles that have the same measure, and corresponding sides are the sides uh, that correspond from the two triangles that are similar. So here's an example here, like AC is a corresponding side to FD. Um, CB, this side here, is a corresponding side to this, and so on and so forth. So they're just saying like how we call things uh, corresponding angles and corresponding sides. Pretty obvious. All right, so let's say we have um, these two triangles. You're told these two triangles are similar, which means that they they have the same same angles, uh, but the lengths are different. Okay, so and they're telling you that this angle here is the same as this angle here, and these angles here are equal, and these angles here are equal. So but that's what this little notation means. It says the triangles are similar, so the corresponding sides are proportional. So imagine if I just flip this guy up and rotated it around. Actually, think, think if I just rotated it 180 degrees. Then the 8-inch side would be corresponding to the 5-inch side, and the X side would be corresponding to the 7-inch side. So they're going to do a proportion where they say, okay, the 5-inch side on the small triangle is to the 8-inch side as the seven inch side on the small triangle is to the X on the big triangle, okay? So it's basically small triangle, small triangle, big triangle, big triangle, and you just have to make sure that you're using corresponding sides correctly. And how do we solve a proportion? We've gone over this before. You cross multiply. So we're gonna have five times X equals eight times seven. So that's how we do that, which is 56. And then to divide by five to solve for X, you get 11.2. In this case, it would be 11.2 inches. Don't forget, in geometry, it's really important to label your answer with the correct unit. So that's what they've done here, 11.2 inches. 
Pythagorean theorem uh, is a super popular theorem. Uh, it's used to a lot of times in ancient times to uh, uh, they used this theorem, excuse me, to make sure that they would have a right angle if the sides corresponded in this theorem the way that the theorem describes. If uh, the the square of each side, uh, let me put it this way: if you square the two legs and add that up, and it equals the square of the hypotenuse, then you know you have a right angle. Mainly what you need to know how to do in this class is to find a missing side of a right triangle. So we'll give you two out of the three sides with numbers, and then we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side. So they're just trying to show you visually that like, if you have a right triangle where one side's three, one side's four, the, the hypotenuse must be five, and visually they're just trying to show you the square is the size, you know, the, 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 the square size of this. And that adds up 9 plus 16 equals 25. So let's look at a couple examples. So let's say we have a right triangle where one leg is. So let me go over one thing again. In a right triangle, well, I forgot to mention this even though it was in the thing. We call the longest side the side opposite the right angle. It's always opposite the right angle. We call that the hypotenuse. And then we call the two sides that make the right angle the leg. And we call that that because it makes an L all the time. So the two sides that make an L are the leg, and they're interchangeable as far as A and B is concerned. But the hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle, is always going to be C. It's always got to be C in the Pythagorean theorem. But A and B can be switched. So let's say here we have a, a leg of 9, a leg of 12, and we want to find the hypotenuse. So the Pythagorean theorem tells us that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we just plug in what A and B are. And uh, 9 squared is 81. B squared... Our 12 squared is 144. That adds up to be 225. To find the, the last step of the Pythagorean theorem is always to take the square root um, because we're uh, inversing squaring. And uh, the square root of, of 225 gives us 15. Now, this picture doesn't have units, so I guess they left off the unit there. But the length C would be 15. Let's look at one more. Okay, so let's say we don't know what leg. All right, the, the length of a leg, and we call this maybe B if you want. This would be A, this would be B, and this is C. So the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This time I know A, I don't know B, and I know C. So 10 goes in the C spot, and 9 goes in the A spot. So now I have 81 plus B squared equals 100. Now notice in the last one how I just added them up and did the square root. But this time I don't know one of the legs, so I'm actually going to have to subtract the 81 from 100 first, and then take the square root at the end. Okay, so the square root of 19 is about 4.4 centimeters. I just created a unit here of centimeters. I think that's it. So just be ready to do uh, problems where you find missing angles, where you find missing sides using proportions on similar triangles, and where you find missing sides on right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. But the Pythagorean theorem, let me remind you, is only for right triangles. Good luck. We'll see you next time.